All right, so obviously you guys saw the title of this video, so I'm just going to get right into it. Um, the reason why I never went professional is a multitude of things. Um, and it's not that I didn't have the talent or I didn't know how. It was because of my choices why I never went and what I saw going on and what I felt was more important to me is a reason why I never went professional. So I guess I should start with how I, why I wanted to become a voice actor. So my whole life I struggled with identity. I didn't know who I was, what I wanted to do, where I wanted to go. And I battled with that all my whole life, even in high school, I was seeing all of my friends figuring out what they wanted to do, going off to college, doing their own thing. And then um, I got into college and I was probably going for about probably a few months. Um, and then that led into a year. And then it was June of 2012. Um, I had met up with a long time friend and he invited me to something called a cell group which is essentially a bible studies so I told him yeah man you know I'll I'll, I'll go there and um later on that day uh I went and uh that Sunday I had gone to the church that he had invited me to, which is a Christian church. And I'm paraphrasing. I'm cutting a lot of stuff out uh, just because I know that's not the main point of this video. But there's a reason why I am talking about this. And that is because at the same time I figured out what I wanted to do with my life, I became a Christian and I gave myself to Jesus um, and, and I'm not trying to force my faith on anybody. I know if I keep talking about um, Christianity, that is like the center point of my entire life. I have no idea where I would be if I did not give my life to Christ. And the reason why I talk about it is because it's so intricate into this reason why I didn't go pro. Now, for many of you that don't know, per the predominant religious faith in America is Christianity. But if you're a Christian, you know that Christianity is not a religion. It falls under the religious category, unfortunately. But religion teaches you, do this, that, and the third, and God will love you, and you can save yourself. But Jesus clearly indicates that there is nothing you can do that could save yourself. It is only through him that you have salvation. And when I gave my life to Christ, I finally figured out what I wanted to do. And fast forward a couple of years, I'm taking acting classes. I'm doing um, courses on mic techniques, on learning how to audition, um, understanding character, character 101, just going into depth about learning how to act and be a voice actor. While simultaneously at the same time going to college and serving in ministry and doing all that I can to just be a better person, a better brother, a better friend, a better uncle, a better grandson, a better nephew, and just multiplying myself in every and any way that I possibly could. And at that time, me and my friends, we were going to um, a lot of anime conventions, and uh, we happened to go to Anime Expo in 2014, 2015, and 2016. Well, 2014 one, I had a blast. It was, like, amazing. I had just turned 21. So um, I didn't go crazy and drink. I've never been, like, a fan of drinking. I, I can't. My body just rejects it. Um, and uh, I just was never a fan of drinking. Um, not really a big fan of, like, smoking. I was very, like, straight edge. But in high school, I did... Do some stuff that I'm like, thank God I don't do it now. But um, next year, um, I had uh, gone to Anime Expo, and <clears throat> it, 
it was an open audition uh, that the studio Bang Zoom was having for Maggie the Labyrinth. And, um, I mean, if any of you guys ever remember that anime, it's very old school. Well, old school now, it's almost like 10 years old or 12 or I, I can't remember. But my friend was like, hey, dude, they're doing an open audition for this anime. You should do it. Um, and uh, he was a YouTube buddy of mine. Um, and... So I go, I meet up with him, we do this audition, and I'm standing in line, and I'm, and I'm talking to this kid, and um, we're, like, chit-chatting, he's telling me, like, you know, like, why he's there, like, you know, he had been doing some acting and some stuff on YouTube, and I was like, oh, dude, that's cool, and um, this kid is very important later, um, well, not, like, super important, but, uh, so I get up, I do the audition, um, and then... I had already known at that point, when you do an audition, don't um, get too attached to the character because you're going to be very disappointed if you don't get casted. So I already knew. I went in there, did the audition, and I was like, Boo, okay, forget it, whatever, it's done, it's over with. Um, fast forward, like, I think like six months, and they announced the casting for the people that had um, gotten um, the roles, like, at that point. And, um, one, like, there was, like, I think, like, three or four, but one of them stood out. And I, I think one of them was uh, Faye Mat Mata. I think I'm saying her last name wrong. Um, but she is, like, big in, like, anime acting. Um, she does... Uh, Aoi and, and bottom tier character, but I think her most famous role is Aqua in Konosuba. And then they showed um, another kid, and I was like, dude, that, that kid looks so familiar. And then it turns out it's Zach Aguilar. And uh, Zach does uh, Genos in One Punch Man, he does Tanjiro in uh, Demon Slayer, and he does another character in Genshin Impact, but I don't play the game, so I don't really know. Um, and I was like, dude, that's hella cool. He's not going to remember this, of course, because he had that one experience with me and he never saw me again. But I saw him and obviously he went on to be very successful. So I remember it, but he probably doesn't remember it. And that's fine. Um, so next year in 2016, I go and I do the open audition again and I do it for Your Lion April. Well, I get up there, I do the audition, and they said, hey, you guys could come back tomorrow and do another audition if you want. So I said, okay. So I went back the next day, did the audition. My buddy had recorded it for me. Well, went up there, did it, went on with my life. Well, about three or four months later, um, I'm getting ready to go to the movies with my friends, and um, I'm pulling into the theater. And, like, no joke, not exaggerating, like, literally, I, I get my parking spot, I park, and I get a phone call. And I always told myself, if I ever get a phone call from Los Angeles or Burbank, I would answer it. And I never like answering unknown phone numbers because it's always, like, a telemarketer or, like, a scam call. But it said Burbank, California. So I was, like, in my, in my head, I'm, like, ah, bro, it's a scam. But in my heart, I'm, like, dude, this could be it. So I answer the phone, and I'm like, hello, and the other person on the line is like, hi, I'm looking for Ronnie Donaldson, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's me, and uh, the lady was like, hi, I'm so-and-so from Bang Zoom Entertainment, and we just wanted to let you know that Mommy Okada had liked your audition, and we want you to come back, so I was like, okay, so at that moment, like, I was freaking out in my mind. I'm like, dude, no freaking way. But, like, outside, I was, like, super cool because I wanted to be professional and respectful. Well, that happens. Um, I we, we schedule an appointment. I go and I tell my leader, like, at the church, I'm like, bro, this is just what happened. I just got this call back. And he's like, all right, man, we're going to fast and we're going to put this into prayer. So I did that. And a couple of days before the audition happens, I get strep throat. And I contact them. I'm like, hey, guys, I just want to let you know I have strep throat. Um, I'll still be there, but I just don't want to get anyone sick. I know it's, like, super contagious. They were like, hey, don't worry. Come in. Um, you know, uh, oh, no. They said, hey, we will um, reschedule an appointment with you. Just keep, uh, we'll keep in touch. And I said, okay. They never messaged me back. And I knew, like, okay, like, I put it into prayer. I fasted. Lord, obviously, this wasn't the right time. And um, fast forward again, um, I start taking classes, I start meeting people, 
And at that time, I started doing, uh, building up my YouTube channel. And my YouTube channel was getting a lot of followers. I was getting a lot of people subscribing to me, checking out my videos. I was working with a couple of other YouTubers that were really helping, like, promote me. Like, I was, I was getting really, really big, but not like, I wasn't, like, huge, but I would say I was decent. Um, and uh, I started uh, meeting, like, professional actors, people that I was literally watching on TV, like, I was just talking to them, like, in a room, like, over, like, Discord and Skype, and I was just like, dude, this is, like, surreal, and they were like, dude, like, you're really good, man, like, but what you're doing could get you in trouble, and what I was doing is I was doing these comic dubs, so I would essentially, um, I would go on, like, DeviantArt or Tumblr or whatever place was uh doing comics and I would message the artist and I'd be like hi my name is so and so this is what I do this is my YouTube channel and I would send them like examples of what I would do and I'd be like is it okay if I could dub your comic and of course like I'll give you a shout out I'll link everyone to like your 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 channel your pages um social media pages and they were like yeah dude like go ahead and do it I think like maybe two people were like no um I'm okay and and that was fine and after that, um, essentially, um, I kind of eased off on doing the comics because I knew that I couldn't do it forever. And I knew that it wasn't sustainable to what I wanted to do and grow as an actor and as a person and as a YouTuber. And a lot of people were like, dude, the Japanese, like, they take their content, like, stuff very serious. Like, copyright is, like, very, very, very serious with them. Um, and I was like, okay, man. And I just thought it was kind of weird because I, I, I was hearing and seeing stories of people that were doing, like, a bridge series or, like, parodies or fan dubs that were becoming voice actors. And I was just kind of like, okay, like, you know, maybe... They did it, and then they went more of a professional route, and then kind of, like, uh, were told, hey, don't do that anymore, and they were like, okay, and they stopped. And some of them did, but some of them were still doing it. So I was like, all right, well, I don't want to get in trouble, and I want to do this, like, the right way. So I was like, I believe that I have a creative mind, and if I do have a creative mind, then I can create my own original stuff. And around that time, like, I started getting really closer to, like, God, and, and I was really understanding, like, who Jesus was, and, uh, it, it got to a point to where I felt that if I was going to pursue acting, I, I felt that it was going to get in the way of my relationship with, with Christ, and, um, I didn't want that to happen and I kept praying about it. I kept fasting about it and, and I never ever felt, and even still to this day, I've never felt God told me, no, you can't do acting. And my pastor was like, dude, like I get like, man, like whatever you want to do, dude, like do it. Essentially he was like, I approve of it. And my leader, he was like, bro, I approve of it. Like you've shown, you know, the Lord that, you're pursuing this career, but it's never gotten in the way of your relationship with the Lord. Well, at that same time, I started learning um, how to play the bass, and I became a musician. I became a musician on the music ministry, and so like that took up a lot of my time, and I was just kind of like uh, going with the motion, taking acting classes, like meeting people because. This business is a who you know, how you know them type of business. And obviously, you have to have acting talent. Like, if you're bad at expressing emotions, especially with voice acting, everything is through your voice. Everything is through your mouth. Like, you have to make your audience believe what your character is feeling. And if they don't, then you're not going to be a good actor. So, number one, you have to, have to have acting talent. Number two, you have to know how to market yourself. You have, you are your own business, and you have to be able to, to market yourself and network yourself. Those are very, very key components to getting in this industry. 
I just kept pushing it off and just kept pushing it off and just kept pushing it off because I was like, look, like I got to focus on, you know, the things in the ministry. Like I got to focus on the church. I got to focus on, on this. I got to focus on work. I, I, I got to make money. If I don't make money, I can't pay for classes and I need classes. And all of these stuff started piling up. And over the course of time, I couldn't establish whether the Lord was telling me no or it was because it was my fault. And I realized that God wasn't telling me, no, you can't do it. I tell you the story of how it all started where I was like, man, like I really can make this into a career. And, and into the story of, of where we're at now, I just felt over time things kept happening and I just kept feeling like, dang God, like, is this ever going to happen? Like, am I ever going to go pro? Like, am I ever going to get into the acting studio? Like, am I, am I finally going to start like putting my name out there with demos and people start recognizing me, directors, agents, studios, actors, and like seeing my talent, like, are they going to finally see it? And from 2016 to 2020, things got, and, and, it's a hot topic issue, and I don't know why, but from 2016 to 2020, things got massively political. Um, it felt like in every area of my life, politics were invading every single space. And um, I just started seeing so many voice actors start to stand, put a stance on their like their views on, on the presidency, um, on certain politics, on, on certain political issues. And I felt I couldn't escape it. I felt like everywhere I was looking, someone was talking about politics. And I was like, dude, this is becoming nauseating, man. Like, um, obviously I have my views, I have my beliefs. Um, and I understand that there's people out there that have different, different of opinions than I do. And that's fine. Um, and those people have to understand that there's people out there in the world that have different opinions than them. And I just, things didn't feel right. And um, I just started seeing like a lot of people um, talk about their politics and like everything was fine. And then I started seeing other people talk about their politics and then it, it kind of felt that they weren't allowed to say those things. And I just, I thought it was really weird. And I was like, dude, like, why, why does it feel like if this person says this, like they're ostracized or, or I don't even know if I'm saying the word correctly, but I didn't like it. And I felt like, I understand that politics is in every aspect of our life. We can't escape that, unfortunately. But if the, if politics are becoming like the main point of the acting industry, industry, then in my opinion, the acting industry is failed. It is okay for people to have their, their source of opinions. If they're not hurting anyone or they're not causing violence or they're not starting violence, if you live in America, you you have the right to express your opinions, but understand there's there's pros and there's cons to everything you say and everything you do. So you have to consider, do the pros outweigh the cons? Or do the cons outweigh the pros? So if you live in America, you have the freedom to express whatever you want. And I'm all for that. Whether I like it, or I don't like it. If I don't like it, I will say, hey, you know what? You still have the right to say that. I may not like what you have to say, but you do have the right to say that. And I just kind of slowly stopped like actively pursuing professional acting because of that. And I was like, I don't, I don't like this. And I'm going to hold off. And... I started growing closer to the Lord and 2020 to, to 2024, where we're at now, 
if you follow my YouTube channel, you'll see like I haven't posted on there in in consecutively for a very long time. And I felt like the Lord was allowing me to perfect my art whether I posted it or I didn't because I felt like he really wanted to use me. In Mark chapter 8, um, which is in the New Testament, Mark chapter 8, verse 33 to 34, and calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the world and to forfeit his soul? For what can a man give return for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in the adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in glory and his Father with the holy angels. And I felt, what good is it for me to gain the world and to lose my soul in the process? I completely believe that we're blessed with many talents. I was talking to my buddy about a lot of these things, and he brings up um, the parable of talents. And he's like, dude, like, you do a lot of things in the church. And don't ever feel like the church, because the church is the people. But he's like, you have talent, man. You play the bass. You're learning to play the guitar. You have this voice acting. You can edit. Um, you're a YouTuber. Um, you're athletic. You, you were a personal trainer. Um, and he's like, God is allowing you to have all of these things because he wants you to multiply it. And a lot of the times people feel like they can't go and pursue their dreams because God's going to be like, no. And a lot of the times people fall into that trap. And then what they do is they blame God and they blame the church and they hold a resentment. And they say, because of God, because of the church, I couldn't go and pursue my dreams. No, 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 no. God is not telling you no. God wants you to be the best at you, whatever it is you're doing. Just not at the cost of your relationship with him. If that starts to happen, then God's going to be like, this is an issue. But if you don't allow it to be an issue, God is blessing you. Obviously, put it into prayer. Talk to your pastor. Talk to your leaders. Talk to your family. And if everything aligns, then do it. In the Bible, it talks about the seven deadly sins. I started to notice um, three things. And I became a glutton. I became a sloth. And I started developing the sin of lust. Uh, the sin of gluttony, um, I was eating whatever, whenever, and at inappropriate times. And I, and I became very overweight. I was getting headaches. I was getting, like, problems within my stomach. Um, and uh, I was getting, like, just out of breath. And it is true. Like, when you don't have a healthy diet, you feel terrible. And no amount of working out, your exercising can never outdo a bad diet. If you are serious about being healthy and losing weight, you have to eat healthy. Your diet is 80% of the entire thing. 20% is working out. And I've been working out for 10 years. I worked at a gym for six years. I know what I'm talking about. I've experienced it. I've lived it. I became a glutton. The sin of sloth. I became lazy. I wasn't prioritizing things. I wasn't taking my responsibility seriously. I wasn't editing. I wasn't recording auditions and sending them in. Even if I was getting them from legit studios and people who were professional were sending me auditions on my email and I wasn't, e and I wasn't auditioning. I became lazy. I didn't want to take care of my responsibilities and that became a problem. Then the sin of lust happened and that was wrong. And, and I was lusting for money. I was lusting for power. I was lusting for women. And I was just like, this is a problem. And in the Bible, 
for the sin of gluttony. Be not among drunkards or among glutton eaters of meat. For the drunkard of gluttons will come to poverty, and slumber will come with the rags. Don't indulge yourself in food and, and, and drinks and alcohol. Be of sober mind. And you can find the, that sin of glutton verse in Proverbs uh, 23, 20 to 21. The sin of sloth. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. For there is no work of thought or knowledge or wisdom in shield to which you are going. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10. Can't be lazy. Like work doesn't just find you. You have to put in the work so the work eventually finds you. If you're trying to be a voice actor, like our Additions aren't just going to start flooding into your email. No, you have to put in the work. You have to do your dil do. You have to do your diligence. You have to be responsible. You have to work. You have to show people. Look, I have this talent. This is what I do. Sending in demos, and then eventually you get to a point where they start sending you auditions, and then the work starts coming in. But you have to put the work in first. Matthew chapter five verse twenty eight. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery in their heart. So not just doing these things, but if you think them in your mind, you've already committed adultery. What is adultery if, if it's basically cheating? If, if a man and a woman are together and a man goes and does something with another woman, he's cheated. If a woman goes and does something with a man, she has cheated on her husband. If you believe in the Lord and you look at a woman with lustful intent, you have already committed adultery. I don't want to be ashamed of my faith. If everyone else is, else is allowed to have their beliefs and their views, why can't I? What is wrong with me having my faith, but you're allowed to have, have your beliefs, your views, but I can't? And I, and I thought that's wrong, and I still think that's wrong. Why haven't I gone professional? It wasn't the right time. And I started to realize that God was saving me from a lot of pain and a lot of heartache that I would have gone through if I would have went into professional acting at the young age that I was when I started to pursue it. And I didn't go professional because of myself. My mind was telling me, oh, all these politics. Oh, all of this stuff going on over here. Oh, well, you know what? You could do it later. I needed to do this video because I needed to be honest with you guys. I don't want things to be the same. I want them to be different. And if I want to start seeing results, I have to put in the work. I know of a lot of people have probably stopped watching my videos, and that's fine. Respect. Why should you watch my videos? I barely even post. But if you guys still are watching my videos, dude, I really appreciate that. Like, literally, you have no idea how much that means to me. I've been a terrible YouTuber. I've been a terrible actor. I've been a terrible brother, friend, son, uncle, grandchild, cousin, nephew, a bad leader, a bad disciple. I've had my mistakes, and I'm literally not, like, afraid to talk about that. But I need to be better. I have to be different. So if you're asking me, Ronnie, well, are you not going professional? No, I still am. I still want to be a voice actor. That's what I want to do. I wanted to become a voice actor the same time I found God. I've put so much prayer into this. That I know if I do things right, God will bless me. Like I said before, I don't want to force my faith, but I can't, I can't hide it. Like, I can't just not talk about God. Like, there is no me without Jesus. That, that's 100% honest. And, like, I'm not going to shove it down everyone's throat. Like, I know that could be super annoying, dude. Like, I remember when people tried to... To, to preach the gospel to me, it was annoying. Like, I was like, dude, like, stop. Like, it's, it's nauseating. And then the Lord humbled my heart. 
if you profess that Jesus is the Messiah, is the Savior, that is not because someone forced you. No, that is only through conviction of the Holy Spirit. Our job isn't to convince anybody. That's the Holy Spirit's job. We need to ask the Holy Spirit, what do you want us to do? What do we need to do? Be a friend. Listen. Lend an ear. Lend a helping hand. I will convict that person. That's not your job. So I'm still going to do voice acting videos. And I'm going to do my dang best to post more consistently. But I do want to implement my faith in my videos. Because I'm, I don't want to be afraid to talk about God. Especially right now. So... Thank you for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. I don't know why you watch my videos, but you do. And for that, I am very thankful. I will see you in the next video. Deuces. Later. Bye.